Now, what you should have seen in an ideal world was footage from the first time I recorded this episode. Um, wasn't too bad or anything. It's just I've got a new replacement mic since. And uh, some of the footage was a bit funky, particularly fighting the uh, Drake Blood Knight. So that was odd. Anyway. Well, this is awkward. Yeah, never really thought too deeply about this guy having Lightning Blade and looking over at us, Dragon Peak, but here we are. That was a quick fall. Alright, so we have some lovely fashion on today, as you can see. Carla's pointed hat, sunset armor, Cornex's wrap, and Morn's leggings. If you sort by weight and have a look, I could easily fit any of these on, and, you know, fit arguably better. Arguably be better, but... Especially these, but... Looks cooler, so whatever. Could this be a prince? Could this be a hiding place? I get what you mean. Took me a second, but I get it. I was thinking it might be a dumb troll message or something, I don't know. So we have a cell sword over here. L Lothric Knight. One of the Halberd Hollows for some reason. Um, someone who is a bit of a dragon who's crumbled into fucking nothing. Cell sword again. And Lothric and Halberd guy again. Right. So, let's partake, shall we? In Path of, path of the Dragon. Doesn't take as long as the, uh, the Nest in Fire Link in Dark Souls 1, but still. Was that a dragon? No, it was a fucking wyvern, of course. I'm trying to think. I, I can't remember the bloody lore on how closely related to the ancient dragons they are. Drakes are still the chump imitators, so I assume wyverns are very much the same. But hey, who knows? Given this is a true sequel to Dark Souls 1, maybe they're basically the equivalent of ancient dragons because reasons. I don't fucking know. Anyway... We're in a really cool place. You'll notice, unlike the rest of the game, we have a nice blue sky. Clouds aren't moving, but still, that's pretty cool. And you can see through the uh, rock down there. No, Sunken Valley is not down there, unfortunately. That'd be sick, though. Right, so I never normally get invaded in this part, but who knows. Return to Lothric has truly ended by this stage, given it's the 13th of July. But you never know. Welcome to Ash Dragon Peak. Alright. Hey, buddy. Aha. Uh -huh. So, we'll go into uh, these guys in a little bit in regards to some of their funkiness, but aesthetically, this is one of my favorite places in the whole game. It's really fucking cool, and I'm hoping we get areas like this in Elden Ring. So, um, Ash Dragon Peak was going to be very different in the uh, original vision of the game. Um, this entire area up above was going to be a level. Um, a full, full level, um, as was some of the interior you can't see yet. For people that haven't played the game, that must sound fucking weird, but it'll make sense in about five minutes. Also, yeah, Wyvern just chilling up there like a dick. Um, just for context... Most of the area we were about to go into was repurposed for a boss fight. And conceptually, yeah, it's pretty cool. But it's, uh... It's, uh, it's got some flaws, unfortunately. Yeah, so super tracking fireball. And R1 spam the enemy, even more so than the bandits in Lothric Castle and Highwall in general. We've totally missed this. Why he lost track of us? That was weird. Well, no reason not to S this up. So last time I recorded this, I was having a giggle because that Steven Crowder dickhead got his shit pushed in. Pretty great. I know people don't like the politics in their game videos, but fuck Crowder, he's a dickhead. 
fucking bully. Anyway, enough of that. It's true though. Um, these guys have a pretty cool weapon, the Man Serpent Hatchet. Thankfully, I didn't get it last time I was recording this, because I'd be pretty pissed off having to uh, delete the save file. It's a really cool strength weapon. Um, yeah, it's mostly strength scaling from memory. Um, it's like... A, 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 we'll try this again. It's like the strength um, scaling equivalent of the axe. Well, let's try it again. It's an axe um, in terms of movesets, and it acts like a shodel. Or well, strength scaling shodel. So that's pretty cool. I can always farm it up later on, but who knows, I'll probably never end up using it. So we're being extra sneaky, thanks to my slumbering Dragon Chris ring. How apt. Um, but yeah, these guys have some incredible aggro range, mainly the fireball shooters, so we gotta be careful in that regard. This guy is kinda weird, he doesn't really get up unless you get like, really absurdly close to him. And this guy is what you think he is. Okay, that's only plus seven. That's right, because my whip's at plus ten, because I was an idiot. Alright. Uh-oh. Speaking of idiocy... Okay, that was weird. I should have gone for it, but... So, the main saving grace about these guys is... Uh-oh. Uh, you don't want to run out of stamina, but... Thankfully. Okay, he's acting really strange, in fact. He should be way more aggressive than he is right now. Um, you stagger him and you get some, like, counter damage type stuff on him. So there we go. That's a better example of it. They go into a somewhat of a stagger state. Uh, which makes them, you know, way easier to damage. We got this cool ring. Some, a uh, ring? Shield. Something from Demon Souls. In essence, Ancient Dragon Great Shield. A wooden shield bearing the image of an ancient dragon very slowly gives you HP back. The painting is the result of an exquisite but painstaking technique. Lingering, undying traces of the ancient dragons can still be seen in their descendants, the man serpents, though they have fallen far from grace. And it's a weapon skill shield. So that's pretty cool. If you want to um, do a Demon Souls type cosplay of patches, um, I did have it on a build I called Trusty Mald Maldron. Um, meant to be the invader from Dark Souls 2. That classic friendly guy. Fuck you, buddy. Lightning clutch. It's the same as all the others, I believe, in terms of description. Don't want to fall off a cliff. Yeah. Hand grasping a yellow stone. Uh, an old fable in Londor claims that... Okay, yeah, clutch. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, same thing. Alright. Boss is there, but fuck it. There's a bonfire right here. We can just run back and heal up. So I can totally get this to plus 10. Eh, if I wasn't recording, I'd do it. I'm pretty sure this is what I did last time anyway. If I wasn't recording, I'd go back and level it up. But fuck it. That can wait. Um, until after we have a ton of souls, in fact. Because that's exactly what's going to happen. So I don't, don't remember the exact amount, but enough of these swings will easily stack a big boy up there. If you have a great weapon like... The spiked mace or great axe, it's a lot easier. So, again, look at this place. So fucking cool. This entire area was going to be a more typical level, and you'll see what I mean in the next couple of mi seconds, not minutes. Cool statues over here of a dude called the Nameless King. We might meet him later on. That'd be rad. So, I uh, hope you liked Dragon God. I kind of like Dragon God in spite of everything, admittedly, but I'm a widow. Ancient Dragon from DS2. And also a boss we'll be fighting in a tiny bit. Hey buddy. So this guy, uh, you can't really fight properly, we'll just do a little- ow. Oh, fuck you buddy. We'll just do a little demonstration on how much damage we deal with a, uh, Two handed R2 to the foot. R1 uh, to the foot, sorry. So, what I'm trying to get him to do is I'm baiting him into breathing fire on these chuckle fucks. So, these snake dudes, by the way, with the daggers, are very good at staggering you super bloody easily. There we go, timed it correctly. They always survive just. It's really annoying. And 
lingering hit box, I guess you'd call that. Yoink. There's some items all around the arena, so I'll just quickly go this way and grab the item that is not here. Gorgeous, gorgeous view, though. That mountain in particular is really cool. That'll be a good talking point. So the item's over there, my bad. So we'll give him a good slap on the head just so you can see the context. You can totally do it, but boy is it a painstaking, uh, painstaking task. Um, also, like many dragons in these games, oh damn it, that doesn't count. His feet have some weird hitboxes in terms of the stomp, so it's really not worth it. You're better off to just do the gimmick. That said, we're not doing insignificant damage to him, it just, it takes an eternity. So, why even bother? Now, I'm just grabbing items as we do this, because I... Oh yeah, that's right. That counts. Because I'd rather not have to rerun this. Gotta be careful, because, yeah, it'll count near the ladder too. So yeah, can't be invaded here. The boss invasion glitch would actually be pretty fucking sick in this circumstance, though. So yes, this is very much Dragon God, except with a hint of Shadow of the Colossus, I guess. Yeah, that sounds quite apt. Also, um, Duke Nukem Forever. On their little silent kitty feet. Yeah, so they have some cool backflips. So one current, well, one reoccurring theme we're going to be seeing in this level is enemies not giving a shit about geometry. Didn't happen there, um, amazingly. But their necks will flip through walls like motherfuckers. This dude is scripted to do that. Okay. That was weird. He's not meant to go that direction. He's meant to go straight out. That away. So if you have a look, there's another big snake boy up there. Um, with his little fire breathing friend there. There's another one there. And there's another one patrolling there. With another big boy up there. So you don't have to fight him, but, you know, so he hasn't seen us yet. He is coming this way, so we can maybe backstab him very quickly. So yeah, um, I won't block right now, but I'll, I will later on for you guys to see. But yeah, they will deal chip through your shield, but that's fine. So five breathing attack, fuck you. That'll chunk him big time. If you're willing to cop the hit like I am. Let's just heal. These guys are quite respectful most of the time. They can do some bullshit Cathedral Knight style combos, but they won't go nuts. They generally respect the, uh, the concept of stamina. So he's kind of pissed off down there. He's not doing a lot. Wow, my TV is actually quite loud. <laughs> this music's quite, uh, quite something. Lightning Bolt. Alright, so... In spite of what you might be thinking, no, there is a real boss in here. I should upgrade this. It's not Chuckle Fuck down there. Big boy. So, welcome to the, uh, real enemy we gotta be careful of. Chain Snake. Now, he has a really fucking rad weapon. Boy, I wish we could get it. So, sometimes he'll clip geometry. And, you know, obey the same rules as us. Other times, uh... Well, this guy's quite infamous, to be honest. So, what he can do is fucking nail you through walls if he tries hard enough. There's clips of people running down the stairs away from him, and he'll clean get you through the wall and the floor. No problem. So there's a whole skip you can do down there, but I've never quite... Well, I've bothered, but I haven't ever nailed, because I can't be fucked. Um, where... Oh, there we go. Where... I'll just see if we can get a good look at it. So down there where the statues are, right? Just... Just, um, on the raised bit next to the bell. You can totally jump off and do, like, a plunging attack onto his head. Which is actually the gimmick of this fight. 
And yes, this is the area we can go to in a moment. The bonfire is right through there, in fact. So the whole idea is you climb up here and you plunge and attack him. Not exactly uh, engaging, but it's uh, it's something. I might as well put on silver cap for this. No point taking damage for no reason. Even though we're heading straight back to Firelink after this. So I am gonna have to do I am gonna have to do some cleanup down there sooner or later. Thankfully we do have the uh, Yep, the coiled sword fragment. Yeah, shut up. Alright, let's do this. So you gotta be careful because yeah, weakness head, plunging attack. Yep. You gotta be careful because if he moves sometimes, you will just clean fall through his head. It's happened to me. It fucking sucks. So that's that. And no, if you try to run out of the arena, it doesn't actually help. You get teleported back regardless. So this is another type of oddity, like, um, when Emma transports you back to Lorien, oh, sorry, to the Dancer fight. Which, um, if you do, um, how, do, how can I phrase this? If you kill Emma to bring the Dancer about earlier on, eh, it doesn't matter. Um, she, you'll get teleported anyway. So real quick, you're gonna pray in front of the statue. Hey, Drake Blood Knight, you're really fucking cool. Calamity Ring. See you later, fucker. So, uh, yeah, Drake Blood's from DS2. Pretty rad. Pretty rad. And on top of that, would you believe it? The Calamity Ring from Dark Souls 1. Whoa, a reference to Dark Souls 1. In Dark Souls 3. Never. Never, ever. The Dark Souls 2 references do seem to be a little more um, loaded towards the end of the game, curiously enough. Kind of weird, that. Still sucks we didn't get, like, a look at Drang Lake Castle or anything like that. And, you know, they chose the Dreg Heap. Um, sorry. Irvin Peak for the Dreg Heap. Or whatever. A ring made from the orange eye of a Calamitous Dragon. Receive double damage. This ring has no useful powers, and is merely a symbol of dragon worship, a thing quiet, quietly passed down amongst its most fervent adherents, some of who become convinced that the task has been bestowed upon them as a sacred duty. It's not. I know uh, people used to drop it in Dark Souls 1 um, to unwitting hosts right at the start. Um, typically in the parish. I've completely missed my sword. There we go. Alright, now we can worry about other shit later on. Pretty be careful. I don't want that. Yeah, here, here, Yeah. So yeah, if we have a chat to Grey Rat, he'll be like, hey, Lofric Castle. Want me to? Nah, not right now. Five chunks, so we're going alright. We can get some better stuff going on. We can get the uh I'll just for fucking forget. Oh, I know the black blade's there. The Carthus Curve Greatsword. There. We can start upgrading them a bit more, but you know what? Let's just have a look at Cornix. Someone we're never really going to need again, sadly enough. Yeah, okay. Doesn't actually kick our flame up any higher. We're not getting any more spell buff. So let's see. 4, 50. Get 5 damage. 550. 550. Pretty cool. Alright, let's grab some level, shall we? Very well, then Alright, um, now from memory, I did, I did this last time, I managed to beat Nameless King, let's see, three levels, yeah, damage is going to be useful here. Yep, let's have a look, 58, yep, cool, 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 alright, let's go, plus more decks equals faster casting time, nothing I have to chuck, now, nah, all useful spells I totally use all the time. Right? Huh, okay. Well, I wonder what that's for. Hmm, curious. We'll have to go back there one day. Alright. So, uh, oh! 
With the fume? Yo, that's cool. I like the fume. I really do, in spite of all it's, uh... All in spite of the fact it's weaker than the heavy greatsword, heavy infused greatsword. It can't be buffed. And uh, it's... Uh, it's heavy as hell. But I still enjoy the weapon quite a bit. It's cool. It's got a good move set. And, you know, m most importantly, it looks really cool. Alright, so last time I got invaded pretty early. And, yep, okay, good to know that Dragon Statue glitches out even on the PS4. So, over here we have a Man Serpent Summoner. I guess that's what you call it. They have whips. No, they don't drop whips. Much to my, uh, displeasure. So that'll take us down to the start. Now, thankfully, we are a pseudo-poise boy. We are already being invaded. No, you don't, buddy. No, we're not. Hold on, what's going on? Huh. We got too close to here. Okay, that's why. Right. I should probably show it off, but... The elevator, I mean, but... Let's show off this first. So, there's some man serpents here. Well, they were here. Reminds me of a wolf in Ariandel where I was like, oh, I just basically ran into my tripwire. So, you got to be careful because they will totally try to clip you with their necks. So, what's meant to happen is they uh, skewer you from either side. Totally not an innuendo of any sort. Can't be invaded from standing here, I bet. I should have shown it off, my bad. No one actually cares, I'm sure, but too bad. I'm doing it. Also kind of kicks me out of the potential invasion queue for a sec. So that's cool, because I'm a coward. Hey, fellas. So while I'm standing here, from killing the Drake Blood Knight, we got the Drake Blood Greatsword. Greatsword wielded by an order of knights who venerate dragon blood. The sword, its blade engraved with script symbolizing dragon blood, inflicts magic and lightning damage. It's got a cool move set. I'll show it off in a bit. The uh, the main thing to keep in mind though, um, it's a really good twink weapon, meaning a uh, low level invader weapon, because um, it does it has innate magic and lightning damage, which are quite good at low levels. Particularly lightning, especially if you buff it with um, resin. Yeah, so uh, rock lizards, an amazing enemy. You can do that at least. They're really fun to fight, not a, not irritating at all, and they definitely don't have a fatal flaw involving you poising up on them. Yeah. So what the uh, rock lizards will attempt to do if you are not careful is due to how they work. We're just doubling back to get the items. Then I'll, you know, teleport out. What they will do to you is, uh, it's really cool. It's great. Um, if you have something like Iron Flesh or the, uh, what do you call it? Stone Flesh or whatever from Havel's Great Shield. Uh oh, whoa, that, that could have been really fucking bad. Uh, what they'll do is they will just hit you constantly in your instability frames and you will die. You'll poise, but you won't win. Because they damage you too frequently. They're like bone wheels, except not as bad. Well, DS1 bone wheels, except not as bad. So yeah, bit of a shortcut. Um, never really used, except for, you know, to demonstrate this. Now, there wasn't any other items I missed, bar what's over this side of the arena. Ah, Bloodstain in the Sky. Wonder what would have uh, caused that. I wonder... I do remember, though, watching a video um, from <sighs> Illusory Wall. Yeah, that's right. I can't remember which area, but technically this area is within, is like inside another area on the map. Or, no, it's, I think it's it's in the wrong place, so to speak, where it should be um, on the opposite side of Lothric Castle, Lothric Castle or something. So there's Analondo there, there's Lothric there. But technically, we should see Lothric from that way, and apparently, 
if you can get the camera up high enough, which we can't, because we're not using, like, hacks or anything, uh, you can totally see, um, see it, past the mountains. It's there. So there's two Lothrics from this vantage point, but, you know, there's theories about this being a dream, and I'm sure not being Dark Souls 2, people will totally buy that excuse. Haha, uh -huh, I'm kidding. That's the weirdest part of DS2, though. Again, it's just sad what happened to the game and how it got gutted. It is annoying even this far out, like seven years after the fact, people still can't quite grasp, hey, the game went through development hell. You can critique the product, just acknowledge the fact that it wasn't in intention to have Irvin Peak and Iron Keep link up in that fashion. It was, we have no time, we gotta stitch everything together. That's why the DLC in DS2 was so much better than the rest of the game. Because they actually had time to do that. Which I've, I've mentioned before in this playthrough. But thankfully DS3 didn't suffer from that either. Which is great. Um, I think, yeah, I said in the previous version of this. In fact, um, DS, DS3 had the best time in regards to like development time and budget, I assume. Whoa, what the fuck? Whoa, I actually jumped there. Holy shit, wasn't expecting a magic missile to fly that hard. So, Drake Blood's back there, whatever. Snake Boy tries to clip us, but fuck you. Holy shit, I was not expecting that. That legit spooked me. Alright, let's do this. So, two, sh two shield boys here. There's another fellow down there. There's two dagger boys over there. So, if Shieldman won't come out and play... Let's see if we can get them one at a time. I haven't been invaded yet. It's weird. Um, I got invaded pretty early on in the last, uh, the, in doing this the first time around. It was right in that starting area. Um, and it was some, someone trying to poise the shit out of me using the Drake Blood. Hey. Really? Hey, boy. What's up, buddy? So you see, this gentleman uh, thinks and is correct in suggesting that uh, being stuck in a corner and having a lot of poise will probably finish this off. Excellent. Time to, yeah, time to scrub it out. Aha! They have a lot of poise. Not as much as us, though. See ya, buddy. Get weapon hearted, my friend. Also, a mechanic these guys haven't shown off yet, other than having the fucking hollow soldier, soldier quick R1 slash they'll try to do, is they have a parry stance. That said, the parry seems to come out before the stance itself actually fucking finishes. So, you know, that's cool. It's a lot of fun to deal with. One. Okay. I find doing that whole counting trick I sometimes do really helps with these guys too. There we go. Gotcha. I don't know why. Sometimes counting seems to help with timing. Even though I'm not actually... Well, I'm kind of just counting what I see. I'm, it's not like an ingrained timing, so it means nothing. Ah, yep. Still in the sky. I mean, I know the, you know, the likely reason for it, but... Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if, if it was like some map data thing where it's like technically something else should be there. So, symbol of a true knight, Yellowstone plates are granted to those who would be dragons. And to royal palace guards for magic absorption, being the blue ones. He can totally stand there, it's not really anything special though. I did have a poise boy rock up on me over here with Havel's, um, sorry, Havel's, um... It was in pretty heavy armor, and it was gundy as hell, but I believe. I was a really frail light build, and I was probably uh, not quite as strong as I should have been. So, I got kind of screwed over big time. Now, I don't know if this area is meant to be tied to, say, Sen's Fortress or the Dragon Eyrie from DS2. But, um, yeah. Not intended, but it's a cool little trick to get that. Oh, yeah, the thing I should have done. Um, but I definitely get a Sens vibe from the, uh, you know, the presence of the Snakeman. That's for sure. 
So there's some lizards over there, right? Some rock lizards, so... Alright. That'll, that'll do it. Plonk. Excellent. This guy probably won't do it. Last time I shot him from over there. And it was great, because they both just plonked off. Yeah, he's kind of stuck. No, no, he's coming. Come on, buddy. Let's give him some encouragement. Yeah? Yeah? Come on. Very adorable little fucks. I'll give him that. Nah, nah, he's bored. Alright. I did see a clip the other day of someone trying to drop to um, an area down below, actually. It might be here. There's a plank sticking out somewhere. It's probably on those, um, those wooden beams over there. And it looks like you can totally land there. In fact, they even plonked a prism stone down on it. You know, for its intended use. Not making, like, a nice display. Actually testing if full damage will kill you. And it's totally geometry. You can stand there. Except for the part where you get pushed off. Yeah, so these guys love to do something really cool with walls and their flame breath. Which is just click through it. Thankfully, they can't roll through it. There we go. And their flame breath actually does a lot of damage. Show it off. I'm not getting hit by it. Just doing that. Yeah, so this is strange. You haven't been invaded yet. A few rules of nature, I guess. Nah, this is... It's, uh, rules of nature isn't too fitting, because this is what this fight is. So it's a weaker version of the boss variant. Not particularly hard. And the camera kind of goes nuts because of its neck. Yeah, so as you can see, um, wonky stomping hitboxes, huh? If someone tells me the head hit me, well, I don't know about that, because that's what that looks like. I don't know what he was doing there. I think that was meant to be swinging its head. So yeah, it's not a very engaging fight, this... I can't remember the lyrics. I haven't listened to Rules of Nature for a while. With the lives on the line, on the line, alive. Dun, 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 dun. Gotta follow the laws of the wild. This is why I wear the sunset set. That, those cloth physics look really cool. Yeah, so uh, dragon airy, huh? Ancient dragon. Yep. Someone I've never fought, and I don't really want to have to, because there's no fucking point. I'd rather beat Vendrick with one less, uh, one less giant salt. So, I know this seems to be the whole theory of Sen's Fortress had something to do with the Nameless King, retroactively at least. I, but I think those theories kind of existed back during DS1's heyday as well, so I don't know. Could be talking out of my ass in this case. Rules of Nature... Uh, Wow, thanks for fucking that up, Wyvern. Fantastic. Phew, I, I thought this was this was going to be the moment of... And then I look over and notice I haven't been recording. Even though I know I clicked it. And we did a sync test. And it looked fine. Alright. Yep. So, uh, this is one way to get past the Wyvern. You don't really have to fight it. And honestly, it's not worth it unless you just want souls. And let's be honest, I am as a hollow. I'm something that feeds on souls. Perhaps you've seen it, maybe in a dream. Murky forgotten hitboxes. Oh, okay. For a second, I thought, oh, maybe we were being invaded for real. Yeah, so that's the rolling attack, but, uh... Fucks you up if you try to poise through it. Get fucked. It's either the starting area with the summoner, or it's round back. Uh, typically the invasion hotspots in this place. There are a lot of invaders here, more so than other areas though. I'm um, having some kind of strike weapon would probably be better, but... Hmm. Yeah, so don't take these guys lightly, they will fuck you up if given a chance. Yep, that's what I get for trying to... Um... Fight them. Alright, let's show off some goodies, shall we? Uh, no, not what I wanted. 
So you can totally bully him really easily. You can if you want, but you're better to kill them anyway because they give you twinkling titanite, titanite scales. Which is pretty fucking cool. Mountains, mountains, mountains. Back area. That's where invasions typically occur if you haven't been invaded at the start. Um, technical hiding spot, I guess, but technically somewhere you could, you know, hang. I wouldn't advise it. But while we're sitting here, or we'll standing here, I realize... Yep, people are definitely going to fall for this. 100%. Weird, I didn't get this last time now I think of it. Hmm. I keep getting the pillar. If I was invaded, I was going to try to hide out in that first room though, as a, as a dragon statue. But alas, be wary of the liar. Try victory. Now they're going to summon a friend, and I hope it's the less tanky version. Yes. Cool. So, I don't know if this is meant to be Prince Rickard from DS1, the owner of Rickard's Rapier, because the one you fight in Sens wasn't real after all, I don't know. But we got Rickard's Rapier. That's cool. Listen carefully. Don't give up. Hear the toll of the bell. Oh, come on, really? Let's just plonk this on. It's unlikely we're going to get invaded now, and if we are, that's cool. There's no other enemies we really have to contend with. Yeah, so this is what I was hoping for. So if you're in the starting area, you can probably just slot in somewhere on a map, ideally, and just do this. That said, invaders will probably get pissed off, and, you know, this game being five years old and all that, they'll just start swinging at the statues. To travel the path of, path of the dragon, do not ring the great bell. That's the great bell. Ooh! Sunbro. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Buddy, you're rad. How about you? Zimic Nugget. Great axe user, huh? Cool. Area down there we can go to. Yeah, so that links us back to the start, where we got a cool little weapon you uh, might have heard of. The Dragon Slayer Spear. It's a pretty cool weapon. Yeah, so... I... Apparently, this area was once a proper, like, bridge area, I guess. Um, I phrase that weirdly, but it was actually a bridge linking, uh, linking you up to somewhere. And the back area you kind of got a little glimpse of was going to be a little different. Apparently, there was, like, a tree-like structure similar to, I guess, Lost Isolith or, um, Shrine of the Mana. Or even, you could say Demon Souls, um, at the very end. And you were going to fight a big-ass dragon there. And that dragon kind of lives on as Midia, I guess. But not really. And yeah, we have the eyes of the Firekeep, and we'll give it to her one day. Sooner or later. Yep, so. It's a spear. Anyone from who's uh, played Dark Souls 1 up to a certain point should recognize that attack. And as a charge, which shoots out a lightning bolt. Apparently, this used to be pretty good back in the day. And then it got nerfed, and then they realized that the uh, gargoyle flame sphere, uh, the gargoyle flame sphere, was way worse and nerfed that into the ground even harder. Um, cross spear associated with Ornstein, the dragon slayer, a weapon of the gods imbued with the strength of lightning. Two-handed thrusts utilized for support of the cross and requires great might, but can pierce deep into, into the flesh of dragons and send mere men flying. Lightning charge. Charge with spear at waist to breathe with lightning, then f release bolts with a final thrust. And meanwhile, Rickard's rapier. Oh, that was by accident. It's your standard rapier moveset. And if we press R2 after that. Break down. Let's get a front on. This thing with buff builds is fucking amazing. I don't know uh, which is classified as more meta. Personally, out of all the thrusting swords, I like this one a lot more. I, I just enjoy the simplicity. 
And it's not VS stock, so it's not bullshit. Well, I don't think VS stock's broken nowadays, but who knows. Right, uh, nothing to hand in. Looking pretty good. Uh, weapons to trash, but... Oh yeah, while we're here. Where are we? Yeah, I haven't even upgraded that. So you can't be that much of a tryhard. Great blood, great sword. So, one of the weapons you can make from the Curse Sword of Greatwood Soul is the Mirror Greatsword, which belonged to Lucatil in DS2. And it has the same moveset as this. Um, which is a moveset they both shared in Dark Souls 2. And it's the same kind of moveset you know. The same kind of moveset you've been seeing me use the whole fucking game. Cool. Right, well, let's head on this way. To the Great Belfry. This is unexpected. Well, I've decided to stop running from my fate. Loathe me all you like. I shall take what makes you dragon. 